Hello and welcome to another episode of KB Talks powered by the NKBA, the only podcast dedicated to growing and supporting the kitchen and bath industry. I'm Elle Millard, the Industry Relations Manager with the NKBA and one of your NKBA insiders, and now one of your KB Talks podcast hosts. We've got another KBiz 2019 panel queued up and ready for you today, and get ready to get colorful. This session on the KBiz Next Stage was titled Beyond the Trends, Color is Relative, and that really couldn't be truer. This panel was moderated by Maria Killam, true color expert and owner of Color Me Happy. The panel included designers Rachel Moriarty of Rachel Moriarty Interiors, Vanessa DeLeon of Vanessa DeLeon Associates, and Bryn Olson of Bryn Olson Design Group, LLC. As you'll hear these experts discuss, every single person has their own opinion on color in the home, and it differs based on what room, what mood, the vibe, personal emotions and experiences, and so much more. So get ready for a bright, brilliant discussion about color trends. Well, thanks so much. Um, good morning, guys. Welcome to KBIS. Um, it's a real honor for me to be here on behalf of um, Kohler kicking off a discussion on something that's very near and dear to our hearts, but also mine especially, which is color. Um, I like to think I have one of the best jobs at Kohler. I have my days for sure, but as the product manager for color and decorative products, I get to spend a good part of my day kind of buried in trend forecasting and design, um, especially as it relates to colors, materials, and finishes used within the kitchen and bathroom space. So a lot of fun, but also a bit of pressure because as some of you probably know, Kohler has almost 100 years of legacy in this space. Um, so a lot to be upheld. I suspect a lot of you guys are familiar with the phrase, um, the bold look of Kohler. And that, um, that I think represents our portfolio for so many reasons, but actually was coined at the point of which we introduced our first colors. Uh, so from that introduction in 1928, that was colors like um, autumn gold, horizon blue, um, all the way until this year, um, come check out our booth. We're launching a new collection of, of colors called the Shadows Collection. So lavender gray, black plum, indigo blue, um, and, and dozens of neutrals and color, colors in between. Kohler has, has spent a lot of time demonstrating an understanding of color, but also a commitment to making sure that just like the other building products that you have to play with in the home, you've also got an opportunity to leverage color in your plumbing fixtures. Uh, one of our fundamental beliefs is that that color is a really critical lever that you have in design to transform the home into not only a beautiful space, but also something that really reflects you and your style. So uh, we're really excited to be here today sponsoring a discussion on this topic. We've got a panel, a panel of um, brilliant and colorful minds that are gonna be kind of exposing you guys to the value of color and how to use it to your advantage. Um, so it's, it's a real honor of mine, without further ado, to introduce the moderator for today's discussion, who is Maria Killam. Maria is the CEO and founder of Understanding Undertones, the system for specifying color. She is an internationally sought after color expert, a blogger, a decorator, a stylist, one of my favorite Instagram follows. Um, her blog, Color Me Happy, is one of the top 10 color blogs in the United States. So she's a perfect choice to moderate this discussion today. And we're really happy to have her. So please welcome her on stage. Hello, you can, oh, now you can hear me. Great, awesome. All right, um, I'm just gonna have my panelists uh, come up and um, introduce themselves. Actually, you know what, maybe I'll do my intro first and then we'll get everyone up here. All right, welcome everyone. I bet you didn't expect it to be this cold. <laughs> so before we talk about color, let's talk about color. So color can be calming, soothing, happy, warm, dark, and moody, so much, and so much more. Color is emotional. People get weird about color. People are afraid of color. It's something they want to get their arms around so they can figure it all out. And there's a psychology together, to color. And everyone wants to talk about their favorite color. I mean, even color designers are not supposed to have a favorite color but I have a favorite color too. And there are times when your favorite color will not get along well in your home. 
And you can very quickly ruin your relationship with your favorite color if you get it wrong. So as I teach in my workshops around North America, getting color right in your clients' homes is so much more about your favorite color. Once you have that, you still need to get your neutrals right, your whites right, so that you can have your home can have a harmonious look and feel. And that is where I bring value with my system for specifying color. So because 80% of the time you're choosing a neutral for someone either in paint color or bathroom fixtures, countertops, flooring, the list goes on, areas in the home that aren't necessarily even related to your favorite color. So which takes us directly to the conversation about color trends and why understanding trends is so important. For example, if you were to paint the exterior of your house brown right now, that would instantly date your house 15 to 20 years because that's how long the brown trend has been around. All right, so without further ado, I'm just going to have my panelists come up and they can introduce themselves and we'll get started. Please give them a hand. <laughs> Okay, hi everyone, my name is Rachel Moriarty and I'm an interior designer in the San Diego, California uh, region. And um, I'm also here launching uh, a product line with Elegant Mosaic, some colorful tiles, so if you're in the salon at any time, feel free to stop by. Hi, I'm Vanessa DeLeon, based out of New York City, specialized in high-end residential, commercial, and hospitality interiors. I have a boutique firm. I do design all over the world, and I am the brand ambassador for True Refrigeration, and they're in the North Hall today. Hi, guys. I'm Bryn Olson um, from Bryn Olson Design Group. I am here from Chicago, originally an Alabama girl, and um, we specialize in um, residential primarily, and we do have some commercial spaces. Um, and I'm a brand ambassador for Brizo and uh, Bertazzoni Appliances. Welcome, everyone. All right, so I'm just going to put up the first slide. So you can't really talk about trends without talking about the colors of the year. And certainly Pantone is always the number one, you know, buzz color that everyone talks about. So basically we're all going to give our perspective on what we think of the colors of the year. And so from what I think, I was a little surprised to see this bright, clean uh, coral because I feel like we've been doing these bright colors now for a while through the gray trend. However, um, my version of the color of the year was a much more muted, paler tone of peach is what I see coming, you know, right behind pink, which is here with forest green. And um, then, so there's a more muted shade of coral. This was a photo I took at High Point, I think a year or two ago, shown with like a mid-tone gray. Um, we're talking about uh, Metropolitan, which is um, Benjamin Moore's pick for the color of the year. So Metropolitan is like a blue, green, gray, really, like a mid-tone. And I was surprised by that as well because we're now, as designers now, talking about, you know, gray's been here for, gray's almost at the 10-year lifespan of a trend. So we're, we've moved on to black, to forest green. I mean, back in, like, beginning of last year, I went to the West Elm site and was shocked, because I'm an 80s girl, to <laughs> click on there and see that forest green was suddenly one of the standard sofa colors. And I thought, we're right back to the 80s. I can't even believe it. So, um, so to see, I mean, my clients have not asked me for like a mid-tone gray in probably five or six years. Um, you know, we, I specify, we specify um, my department, my e-design department color all around North America. And what everyone's asking me for is some shade of white. How white can they get it, right? And if they have a Tuscan house, they can't really paint their walls art gallery white. So what's the next slide? Because I think, oh yeah, so. So, so my reaction to the, um, to the Pantone color of the year, um, I was, I was surprised. How about you guys? Yeah. yeah. yeah same here. Same here. Um, and um, but the one thread that we execute the color, and we've actually, when I looked back into my into my files, my first reaction was, oh, we don't do this color. Um, but I always go to this color when it comes to 
flowers. I just noticed, I was looking through my portfolio, I was like, oh my gosh, there's flowers and flowers and flowers that are in this coral color. Um, and then, you know, I started to see that some of my younger clientele, young families, um, starting their first homes have actually in the past asked for this color. So um, these actually, these bedrooms, um, the one on the left and the one in the center and um, the bottom right, um, you can see they're very different types of, of clients in terms of how we executed, very traditional on the left and a little bit more um, uh, trendy on the right, but they really wanted that color. And the best way we knew how to do that was in in places where when they would get tired of it, they could easily change it, so pillows. Um, and I always think that a beautiful coral flor floral will never um, go out of style. Um, so, so yeah, that's what you see here. Beautiful. And it even looks like you've got a Metropolitan in here, so you're totally oh on my trend gosh. on your photos. I was so excited because right? the Metropolitan is something <laughs> I've been that. using. I love, I love the Affinity yeah. Collection. Yeah. Um, yes, exactly. Yeah, awesome. Okay, so this is how I've been using it. I'm in Southern California, and basically our patios are an extension of our interiors. We live in our outdoor spaces all year long. And I actually love, I was happy, I was surprised but happy to see this color. Um, I use the iconic navy or blue in practically every one of my projects. And Same I here. love, <laughs> yeah. right, and I just love the way they play together. I also notice when I have a client that's a little bit color adverse, they are okay with the navy, and then for some reason they're okay with a little pop of coral. So this is how I used it. Um, this is actually uh, for a show that's coming out on HGTV in a couple of months on short-term rentals, and then you can see I used it out in the patio as well. So that's one of my favorite spaces to use it. Awesome, beautiful. Oh, oh pretty. Well, here's mine. So um, I had shown a peach scarf. <laughs> you know, fashion or colors usually start in fashion, right? And then um, then they trickle down into, well, not trickle down, but then, then, then home decor embraces it. So when mint green was all over the runways a few years ago, I suddenly walked into a millennial's home and I pulled out my standard greens and, you know, she wrinkled up her nose and she looked at me and she said, can I see something mintier than that? And I was like, alert, alert, alert. And so, because I'm sorry, no one has asked me for a mint green in the whole time I've been color consulting, right. right? This was, you know, this was five years ago or six years ago when mint green came in. So, so I was at Nordstrom last uh, November and, well, a year ago, no, it would be like over a year ago now. And I saw that peach scarf. So I took a picture of it because I was like, okay, here it is coming. Not as big as pink yet, but, um, you know, that's what I'm seeing. And then, of course, as I mentioned, forest green being the new trendy neutral for the sofa. And then this was a photo I took at um, Maison Objet three years ago when they were you know, showing all kinds of jewel tones, dramatic colors, which is also obviously where color is going. Um, yeah, and that's when I first announced on my blog that black was the new gray three years ago. So like, you know, black's been on my radar for a while, right? I don't know about you guys, yeah. but Black yeah. is always on my radar. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's just that you don't want to overdo it. That's the thing with it. All right, what's the, yeah, which one's this one? Oh, yeah. This is mine. Okay. So I think uh, we were talking about gray, how yes. we're coming out of the gray yeah. um, movement. We're going more towards like the mushrooms and the oysters and the, you know, the warmer grays. But what I'm still finding is my clients, I'll come in and they are so comfortable with gray. It's really hard to get them to warm up. Um, <laughs> so one of the colors that I'm really loving right now is this ochre yellow in this, you can see in this bedroom, it's my way of bringing them in the warm tones into their spaces and kind of, you know, trying to pull them a little bit towards a little mod modernity as far as gray co goes. So um, that, that's what I'm showing here. My clients are still loving gray. I know we're talking that gray has gone through its 10 year, but I don't think my clients know that. Um, and no, in, and I definitely I, don't. Right, no. right. And so the way I counteract it is I just bring in a punch of color and uh, try to you know work with it with them. So ochre has been my my kind of go-to yeah. uh, color that I I love seeing. So well, it was just so funny going all the way through the Tuscan trend. Right, you'd pull out gray and people be like, oh, that's gray. Yeah, right. Now, gray. Now, I mean. Basically, you can't get away from it, that's right. But the warmer, it's like, I find that everything kind of falls into taupe, right? So, because taupe is 
warmer than um, gray, but it's cooler than beige. And so that seems to be where everyone also gravitates to. Or I like to call it grayish. Yes, yeah. right. that's right. Yeah. This oh, this, this guy's mine. Um, so I, talking about the, the black, um, yeah, black is, uh, I would say, is the new gray. I'm getting a lot more um, interest in black. People are starting to become a little bit more comfortable. And there's a way where you can do black where you're not um, closing in the room or making everything dark and dreary. Um, you, can really, um, you can really take it and make it look like timeless and fresh. And um, we, I would argue that um, high gloss black is, um, that would have been like my pick for like the color of the year because you know, this, this finish has been around forever. It's of course very hard to execute perfectly and beautifully in that high gloss lacquer. Um, but we're having a lot more interest in it from a wide range of clients. We have clients that are like edgy and out there and avant-garde, and we have some that are a little bit more traditional and they, they wanna explore it. So we're seeing a lot more of that. Um, so this is an example of you know, really doing that wow feature on a built-in. The rest of the walls, I'm telling you, I'm pretty sure these grays, this is metropolitan again <laughs> on the walls. It's a little brightened. Um, but, um, and then it's funny, you're talking about, you know, the ochre, this is saddle leather. That's the other way that will we'll really warm up this space. Um, I don't really think that gray is going to be going away, you know, anytime soon. I don't think um, so either. But the way... For my clients that are saying, oh, I don't know about gray, but I want warm. When we show them warm, they go back to gray, but how we start to, to do it is, you can see in the accessories, we'll bring in that warmth and, and of mm. course, metals. We love brass. Um, so that's the way to really layer it. I really got off to topic, but really want to talk about um, high gloss black, I think is a really big topic of conversation um, I see from my clients. Well, I also, the reason why that makes sense with all the dark and dramatic colors that are coming in is because if you take a you know, black dining room or a really dark room and it doesn't have a shine and there's no lights on, it's completely yes. dead. Totally, so yes. yes. that's where you need the reflection. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this was um, a few of my slides. I was just interested to note walking by the pottery barn the other day the urn there in the middle, like, I don't know if you guys remember the urn that they've had for the last 10 years of the, or even longer. They've had this, like, kind of creamy, you know, greeny beige urn forever. And I walk by and I'm like, oh, it's almost like they spray painted them black because <laughs> black's the new color, right? It's like, so, and then those were some um, cutting boards that I took a picture of in April at the, at High Point. Um, yeah, so I think that, you know, m what I try to warn my readers all the time is you know, I first learned, I had my first experience with um, really decorating with black, or my first experience of doing it wrong a few years ago when I had installed my sunflower yellow sofa. And then, you know, I, like everyone else, I'm like, oh, I couldn't commit to the second accent color. So I decided to do it in a black and white sundial fabric. And it has this big white sundial all over this black fabric. And so I, so I covered my chair and ottoman in it. And the day that it, so I had a black and white rug in this room and then a black little entertainment unit. And then right outside um, my patio, I had a black and white kind of retro dining room set. So the minute this black and white chair was installed in my living room, I could just feel how heavy it was. And my housekeeper was there that day and she said, oh, Maria, where black used to be the accent color in this room, it's now the main color. And I was like, I know and I hate it. So I shipped it right back on Monday to my, my workroom and ordered some Kelly Green fabric and never looked back. <laughs> so that's the thing to be careful of and also in bathrooms especially, right? If you choose black faucets for everything in a white bathroom, like your eye is just like bouncing everywhere. So you have to, you have to install black in a way that doesn't look predictable because it can get really harsh and masculine and flat and predictable really fast. So there's a point where it's like it hits the tipping point where you're like, okay, I've now just overdone it. So it's a strong color, you have to be really careful. So um, let me just go to the next slide. So that'll be one of your guys' slides, yes. Oh, this is my slide. You can see we use a lot of black. <laughs> where are my slides? I, know, I, haven't, <laughs> I, know. I haven't seen I swear them, I them back to back. But um, so, 
one thing, that I, I brought these in because as an example of, we have clients that will want to just go for it, all in avant-garde. So the top left, we actually, um, a client had a study that was all um, browns and burgundies and um, greens. And um, they wanted something still like dark and cozy, but fresh. And so we did the high gloss everywhere. Um, and to, to keep it nice and bright, you'll see that we really um, used uh, light accents um, to keep it cohesive. And then the, the one below is um, also a study. There's no TV in here. They just wanted a, a lounge where they could just be and read or have a conversation. Um, and they chose dark and cozy. Um, but you can see with the amount of windows, it keeps it nice and bright. And then all the others I wanted to bring in to show for my clients that maybe tiptoe into the, um, the black, but they still wanted it, we do it in small doses. So you, a high gloss, um, this is a, a butler's pantry, pantry with a high gloss um, uh, cabinets, which was actually, the one above is not my work, but it was inspired, um, it inspired my client. Um, but just a small dose of just on the cabinets. And then we found this um, beautiful mid-century high gloss painted raffia furniture piece that was just enough for one client. And then another client just decided to do the pop in um, the, uh, the fire brick, which is super unusual, but they wanted to, you know, have, again, that wow, but not the whole room in black. Um, and then, of course, we're getting a lot of um, requests for interior doors going black, which I absolutely love. Um, and you'll see that something, when you open design books from years past, it's, I think it's a timeless um, I wouldn't call it a trend, but you're seeing the resurgence of people wanting to do that. So I just wanted to show this slide as you can go all in, all over the walls, or just that black and little pops, which is really why I would consider black as the Pantone color of the year. That's but right. But it did make it. That would have been good. <laughs> yeah. Oh, 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 no, I went too far. Shoot. There. That's me. Yay. <laughs> I knew I was in here somewhere. Yeah. So the left picture happens to be my home. Uh, I have a townhouse, and I have all black doors throughout the entire townhouse. Um, but what's important for me in this space, I don't know if it's because I'm a New Yorker, but I love black. I've always loved black. I try to put black in everything that I do. Some of my clients are receptive towards it. Some of them embrace whatever it is. But I try to infuse it in some areas, as you were saying. Um, so that I'm known for that. Um, but for my kitchen, obviously, when I was building this house, white was a trend or white was a thing. And I wanted to go so opposite of white. So what's opposite of white? Black. Right. And for me, it made sense because it's my color it's, and, I, and I love it. And then the whole mix of metals were coming into play. And I was like, all right, so I don't want to go brass and I don't want to go silver. And then how do I do it in a way that it's going to be a much more timeless approach? So I said, why not use copper, real copper? And um, I think copper, not, it won't necessarily be a trend. It's just a metal material that is in between that would always be relevant, at least for me. So I had made those corner pieces on the cabinets in actual copper. So um, cleaning it is is a lot of fun because it does, it does patina. Um, so there's a uh, different way of doing that. I would definitely look into it. Even powder coating, sometimes it looks cheap, but. And when did you put this kitchen in? This past year. Oh, you just put it in. Yeah, yeah so awesome. it's brand spanking new. Yeah. Uh, and then the copper hood is really important. So those are the elements. So I, I broke it up obviously with the countertop. And the countertop, um, this is a Cambria countertop. It has copper elements in it, which is really unusual. It's their botanical gold. Um, so it had a little bit of copper and gold, so I thought it was super appropriate for the space to sort of balance or offset it. Uh, and then the opposite of the butler's pantry, which is not in this image, is copper. The entire butler's pantry is copper with black countertops. So then that's kind of doing the opposite of what's happening in the kitchen. Um, and there's a little bit of a coral undertone to this yeah. photograph. Yeah. Um, it's not my favorite color, but they're definitely, now that I'm looking, I'm like, oh, I have a coral kitchen. <laughs> I'm in trend, you guys. So, um, so that's the left picture. And then the right picture, actually, this project was done about almost, it's going on uh, almost 10 years, believe it or not. Um, and in this home, I did all black fixtures throughout. So um, you'll see a lot of black elements, black handles, black doorknobs, black cabinets in the butler's pantry. Um, and then 
I infused the black in, you know, little elements of doing different textures on the chairs and uh, the custom mirror, and then the wallpaper had black and gray in it. Um, so, and this is a pop of blue on the floor that sort of, you know, relieves a little bit of just like the, the monochromatic color scheme throughout. Um, so I'm a big black fan, and as you can see, 10 years, it still looks fresh and super new. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah. So this is mine. I, I actually took a while to tiptoe into black. I grew up in the 80s where it was like this shiny, uh, oh, I don't, yeah. what was that finish? It was, <laughs> it was horrible. I, I remember growing up with I this know, black, like shiny furniture. It was and a little too much shiny black brass. leather back then. Yes, yeah. and so it took me a while <laughs> to tiptoe into it. <laughs> yeah. But one of the ways I'm finding that um, clients are really open to it is when they are redoing their kitchens but not replacing their cabinets. And it's, I, I love this tuxedo style look you know, with the black lowers and the white uppers. Um, it, gives, it gives you a, a little room to add in some, you know, beautiful pops. Mustard is one of my favorites right now. Um, of course, I have a little iconic blue. And then my favorite uh, metal finish is satin brass. So that's been really great. Um, and then the picture on the left is a historical mansion in San Diego. And we went in and we did all of the trim work in the in the shiny um, black, and then we did the the color on the wall. Um, what is that color on the wall? I knew somebody was going to ask me. <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll find it and get it over to you. I wanted to say hail navy, but it's not. It's I can't remember. Um, but yeah, so I, I, it took me a while, but I'm there now. I'm there. It's beautiful, and I. I really, I agree with doing it light on the top because it depends. You've got to have a really, like your kitchen is, wait a minute, who's the kitchen? You're the kitchen. <laughs> your kitchen is so big and it looks so glamorous, but when everyone try, when people try to take that black kitchen because it's trendy and then just put it in their little tract house, just like we did in the brown trend with all the brown kitchens, then it gets heavy right away, right? So, but the pendulum goes back and forth, right? From light to dark. So it's been light now for 10 years and now we're going right back to dark, yeah. right? So, yeah. All right, so, <laughs> so uh, our last section that we're talking about is when do you start when you're choosing color, right? I mean, people, do you, are you, do you start at the beginning of the project, at the end of the project? When do you start? You know, I was leading one of my workshops in Vancouver, and I was on the second day, halfway through the second day, and the, and the whole time I'm talking about, you know, you need to start with something. Like, you know, everyone always thinks that if you pick the paint color first, you know, then I'll just be downhill from there, right? How many experience this? That their clients just think it's the paint color, right? How about you guys? Yeah. Yes. So... Anyway, halfway through, this designer came up to me and she said, oh, I'm so stuck on this, like, on this, like, um, uh, what was she doing? She was, like, doing an entry, like a foyer in a, in a high-end apartment building. And she said, I'm just so stuck. I don't know what to do. She was on the second floor. She'd already done the first floor, beautiful paneling everywhere and medium brown hardwood floors and, and um, beautiful rugs and furniture. And so now we're looking at the second floor. We're looking at her white walls and her brown floors. And she's looking at me like, okay, well, What's the color? I said, well, I don't know. <laughs> I said, are you putting furniture in here? Rugs in here? She said, yeah. I said, good, start with that. Well, she like jumped up and like kissed me. And I'm like, okay, I've been, I've been talking, I've been doing this for a day and a half now, I've been saying this, right? But it's funny how it's, it, it really just lands when you have your own personal experience with it. Just like I did with the black chair that I mentioned earlier, right? You know, people could have, been, could have been saying all the time, careful with black, you know, when you tip it too far, it's too much. But I had to experience it on my own before I really got that, right? So, all right. So this was actually um, my sister's um, library room that we did uh, last year. And uh, it, for the 10 years that they've, I should be showing the before picture of this room, but... Um, we had been living, she'd been living with her husband's black leather furniture from the 80s. I kid you not. It was so bad. Anyway, so, so when, we, when we picked this uh, color combination, obviously, you know, we could not have chosen the blue and the pink and the, um, the turquoise if we were keeping the 70s fireplace. You know, when they had first moved in, I'd said, you know, we need to paint that fireplace. And her husband said, oh, no, that would look so 70s. I said, what, is, what do you think it looks like right now? 
So anyway, um, we did paint it, and then uh, obviously we could then stick to the color scheme that we were going with. So um, you have to consider your, your fixed elements, right? And that's what I talk about all the time on my blog and in my workshops, that if, you were, if that fireplace could not have been painted because the husband was attached to it or something, right, then we could not have put that color scheme in this room. So you have to always be thinking about um, what your... I mean, you know, because everyone thinks that, that choosing the right color starts with your favorite color, but really it starts with like what's in the room, like what's the tile in my, that goes throughout my home in, you know, if you're in like LA or Arizona or something, right? You have to consider that tile. What color is it, right? You can't just paint the walls Kelly green if you have some earthy Tuscan tile all throughout your apartment. So, um, so yeah, so, um, you know, I always, recommend that you obviously start with something that's harder to do if this isn't something that you do every day, but you all are designers, so um, that's what I recommend, right? It's If you start with the paint color, now you're running around matching your favorite color blue, right? You might find that perfect blue chair or the perfect blue rug, but now it might be too green or too purple because you've painted your dining room a navy blue that isn't the correct one, right? So, yeah, so there it is, painted, and um, yeah, so that's my sort of intro as to, um, or my take on color. Is it first? you pick it last? What do you do? So I do the same thing. I work on the fixed elements. I've noticed that I'm going into a lot of homes where they're, what they're doing is they're running with their favorite gray, what they think their favorite gray is, but they still have travertine running through their, their floors and their floors are turning pink. And so that's usually, I'll usually like to design from the floor up. And another thing I like to do is kind of run up the color up through my, my ceilings. Where I live is a lot of mid-century homes and our ceilings are pretty low. So that's one of the things that I did in this one. We have kind of a low roof and you can't really see the, um, the, the ceiling, but I do like to, to do the whole room in one color. So I think this was supposed to be a coral picture. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I have a new, uh, that's the one thing that I noticed the trends in terms of color on the walls is that, you know, when I first started picking color in the 90s, you know, we were picking color for every single room in the house. Yeah. You know, I'd be like, this is the sage green room. Yeah. This is the, the yellow, this is the gold the room. That's right. And then this is the orange room, the rusty room, yeah. right? Oh, my gosh. I did that so much. These poor people, right? Now they're shopping with, like, paint <laughs> chips. I mean, they need then, to hire you back. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, actually, speaking of that, I had, a, I had a client. So back in the day, I was desperately looking around for, you know, inspiration when I was new, right? And so I was looking at the, you know, fir floors or the honey oak floors, and that's kind of orange, right? So I'd pull out my orange beige color. So then, you know, so five years had passed. This client came to me. She said, oh, Maria, you were at my house five years ago, and you picked some colors for me, and... So can you come back? We want to get some drapery now. We want to repaint. And so I went back and I walked in their living room and the whole thing was painted orange beige, like a, like Benjamin Moore's like sundial or boardwalk, if any of you are familiar with that color. And I thought, oh, this is when I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> <laughs> but now the trend is, right, we need that perfect grayish or like neutral for the main areas of the house, right? And then we might paint the dining room, you know, a, a, you know, an accent color or the bedroom. So, I mean, you, right. And then like the powder room and stuff. So did you yeah. give them a discount? Did I give them? No. <laughs> Five years had passed. I kept that to myself. That was one of those note to self moments. Yeah. You've all had the note to yes. self moments. Yes. Your client doesn't notice and you're like, thank goodness. Totally. <laughs> they love it. That's right. Yeah. Oh, oops, sorry. Too far. All right. <laughs> Okay, so these are, these are my slides. Um, so I thought this was a great question in terms of um, do you approach the walls first or whatnot? And most of my clients usually in the process think that that's what we do. And it's, it, it, the only time we would ever do that is if it's a very specific idea like that dark, cozy, high gloss black study. Um, but for the most part, it literally always changes. We'll have it, an idea, and in our process, how we execute a, a project is, is every room is turnkey. So we will present the entire room all at once. 
because um, that's just how I design. And without a doubt, while we're prepping for this, for this presentation, we'll be changing the wall color um, in our slides, and I'll be like, oh, no. So at first, this, this master on the left-hand side um, was supposed to be like a light, um, very light gray. They wanted light and bright. Um, and then we went to Storm by um, Benjamin Moore, which is another one of their affinity colors. And it just was that perfect way to, to keep the space cozy with the vaulted ceilings. And then this is actually the same, the same home, but on the right is their nursery. And again, they wanted the nursery to be nice and bright. And then when we brought in this panel um, with little Luke's um, L, we were like, oh, it needs to pop. So then all of a sudden we went, um, I believe this is Whale Gray by Benjamin Moore. Um, so it is always changing during the process. It's never, it, I'm never right on the money in the beginning, ever. Well, it's true because you need to choose everything, and then it, yeah. then it kind of shifts depending yeah. on what you've chosen. And textiles, but everybody kind of wants change. to know, like, okay, but what color do you have in your mind? Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> right. Like you're a color wizard. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be on the phone with people because in the beginning, when I did e-design, I was just I would do it on the phone, and so we'd be on the phone, and I'd be looking at their that their images, and I'd be like, oh. No, like, right, I'm looking at all their brown furniture, it's all brown or it's all black, and I'd be like, okay, like, we need a rug here, yeah, we need a lamp here, we need some pillows here. So then at the end of the call, I would say, okay, this is your neutral for your walls, right? But had we started talking about what color is going to be on the walls at the beginning of the call, we would have just, you know, discussed that for an hour, and they wouldn't have been any happier. Right? Because everyone thinks that the heavy lifting is, they think, you know, I had one client come to, come, come to my house. She said, I, this is at the beginning of the gray trend. She said, I, want, I just want to paint my walls gray. So, you know, she's got everything Tuscan, right? So she's got the perfect beige on the walls right now to match everything in her house. So I said, well, you know, what you have right now, no, it wasn't really Tuscan. She had like slip covered white sofas. And so I said, are your sofas Ikea? Well, I was in West Vancouver, which is a high end section of town. And so she looked at me and said, well, I mean, I, I guess if you think that they're from Ikea, I should change it. But basically, she wanted a new paint color, and she didn't want to change anything. Well, you can't do that. Like, color can't create that much magic. It just can't. So that's when you need to talk about, like, you know, what, are, what changes are we going to make now? And it is harder when you're, when you're not moving, right? Isn't it so much easier to move? Yes. Oh, you know, you just, like, right away you know what's staying and what's going. But to do a refresh, like... How much do you throw out, like, you know, to get the it's, look to be it's new? It's more work sometimes. It's a lot of work. Yeah. And people think they're saving on the back end because That's they right. have the bulk of it, but it actually is a lot more work. And it's a it's big lot puzzle. More research for us. Yes. Yeah. It's a huge puzzle. Yeah. I mean, you are, like, really create, trying to create magic at that point. Yeah, exactly. There's coral there in the fire. There is. <laughs> <laughs> you see how I threw that in? Um, so I'm, I'm always a big believer in house, what I call house color. So that's essentially a color that would carry throughout the entire house, which is your common areas. If it's an open floor plan, it would spill into living room, dining room, hallways, foyers, etc. And then I'm big on accents, whether it's behind a sofa. In this situation, this is more like a parlor because this isn't a townhome. Um, and on this... Uh, so. Most designers build from the ground up, right? And the first thing that the, the contractor is going to want is a paint schedule. So that's why it's so imperative to first come up with a design concept that's going to work with your scheme. So I always start with the area rug, what are my window treatments, and what is everything else. So fabrics and textures really inspire the color for the room. And in this situation, it inspire the color really for the entire house of the house color. Um, so I love to use the monochromatic. Here's like taupes and grays and ivories and whites. Um, to me, it's a timeless approach. And again, my black windows and my black fireplace uh, surroundings. Uh, that happens to be uh, my coffee table from my furniture line, but it has a black base. And here is where you pull in just a little bit of that accent, as you were mentioning, very soft. Yeah, you just repeated it perfectly. Right. And yeah. then you walk into the back of the house, and it's that huge black kitchen. <laughs> so that's how everything sort of comes together for me. So yeah. I always start with what are my elements, what are my textures and fabrics, and then I grow from there to the walls. No, um, I wrote a post about black windows and should you put them in your new build? Because, of course, that's the biggest thing everyone's, everyone's doing. And I'm like, look, people. Notice that all of these rooms you're saving onto your Pinterest board do not have window coverings, right? Because you put if you were to put some two-inch wood blinds over top of your black and black windows, 
Well, that's not going to look good. So obviously what you have done is covered them perfectly. So actually, yep. this is the only room with window treatments and partial dining room. Yep. The back of the house is all open because I yep. wanted to take advantage of the beautiful windows. So yep. to me, that was important. Here was just to kind of warm it up. You know, as you bring in window treatments into the length of the room, it just has a warmth to it that sort of sets the tone for the rest of the it space. It does. Yeah, it's beautiful. Ah, green. <laughs> <laughs> this is one of my favorite colors. Um, I thought, I actually thought the Pantone color of the year was going to go more towards the, either a forest green or this kind of a green. This is a little um, uh, short-term rental that I did that we wanted to make. We, we put, you know, built the cabinets out to the top, but it's a very tiny little uh, space over a garage. And it just needed some impact. I did the, the rest of the house is very, very neutral. I did actually do, use the Metropolitan in it. And, you um, did. I did. Awesome. I did. Yeah. And, but it still needed that one little punch of color, especially, and a lot of my clients are um, Airbnb clients or VRBO. People are hunting for those spaces online, and you have to have a punch of color. So that is a great thing. If you're going into the short-term market, you know, uh, short-term rental market, you have to know that your, your uh, photos need to really pop. So that's why I use this green. I love this green. Um, and it, it's, it's sort of that fun tuxedo look that, yeah. you know, white yeah. on the uppers and stuff. So well, You know what? I should have asked all of you what you thought the color of the year was going to be. So you thought it was, yeah, I thought it was I mean, going to be would, green. That would have made sense, yeah. right? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Although they just did green, like, well, not well, just, but was it five years ago or something, they did that emerald color or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But I think that it's a totally different green that we're talking about now, right? right? And what about you? I thought it was going to be black. Yeah. Same. I mean, we're, we're seeing a trend towards dark and moody. Yeah, that's right. Um, so I thought for sure it'd be something. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how many more. Oh, yeah, there we go. Perfect. Oh, yeah, so these, are, these guys are mine. Um, and uh, so I pulled these in to address um, the, the question. I think there was a question about layering um, or how do you keep it, how do you keep um, color exciting from room to room without overdoing it? And so I brought in these slides. This is actually um, my um, childhood home that I grew up in that I... Um, it was 25 years old and had literally not been touched, y'all. My grandmother was a decorator um, back in, so it was all 80s, and our cabinets were peach, and um, it literally had not been touched until last year. Um, so it was a really, it was one of my most meaningful projects, of course, to be able to um, carry on the legacy um, that my grandmother had started. Um, but give it a, a facelift. It was actually a big facelift <laughs> from the hydrangea wallpaper that used to be in that room. With the, <laughs> with the um, it looks black, but it's actually a deep saturated navy. And so basically, each room you can see needed an element of color um, to have that wow. So you can see the, um, the Bertizzoni appliances, the Heritage series, in the black. Um, so in the kitchen, that's what we centered around to keep the kitchen exciting. Um, my mom was just not comfortable with doing anything what she called jazzy in the, um, in the kitchen. Um, she's very traditional, um, but we wanted this to be a fresh traditional. So we took bone black from Benjamin Moore on the cabinets, which ended up actually being more of like a, a grayish yeah. color. Yeah. Um, which is funny because I'm usually more grays, but the grays, the bone black turned out really beautifully. Um, so the black anchored the kitchen. And then the adjacent breakfast room, we um, anchored it with this really deep navy because when I did the visualization with my parents, my, I asked them what their favorite colors are. Um, and my dad, who is a man of no words and lets my mom have whatever she wants, said, blue, I just got to have some blue. Um, because the whole house was burgundies and, <laughs> and uh, beige, really. Yeah. And um, so that was for him. Um, and then my mom was my first art teacher, so I painted that picture um, in blues um, for her. So it, was, so it could be both their rooms. And then the, the picture on, on the bottom um, is, uh, you can see the, the dining room peeking in through. So you, 
All these rooms had to speak to one another, but they each had their own color to anchor. So in this room, we took hearthstone from um, Benjamin Moore on the walls, which had a tiny bit of green to it. Um, but my, my parents really were responding more to like the earthy tones. And, but you can see we went gray. We took all of the browns and burgundies away, and we went gray, and that was really uncomfortable for them. Um, but uh, They trusted you. But, well, it was, it was a tough client, I have to say. <laughs> um, Families are always the toughest. It was really tough. <laughs> but it was the most, it was the most meaningful. Um, and it was, yeah, it was great when it's the re big reveal, right? <laughs> Absolutely. So if you all have time, I would love for you to travel to the North um, Hall. We, I, I designed uh, the True's Kitchens for the last few years for all the shows. And um, even though the, the pictures are sort of distorted here, um, last year we did the Cobalt Blue, and this year we did the Emerald Green. So these are actual refrigerators that are on display in the North Hall. Um, so as you can see, True likes to be a little bit more forward in their thinking, forward in design, and bringing in this um, this this green color. Green color is very bold and fresh at the same time, and it's, it's something that can anchor your space and play well with different maples and woods and lighter woods, even some darker woods, depending on how you style the kitchen. Um, so these are my displays that I've done for True. And what are the green the green things hanging there? Those are ivy. Didn't we do that in the 80s? Yeah. It's totally it all, it all It all comes back. <laughs> it all comes back. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. And this is something to be a little bit more committal because it's, it's a, an expensive piece of equipment for your kitchen. So it's something you have to love, but also something that is much more of a statement. And what's interesting about this, and, and you're seeing it with faucet companies and with refrigeration companies and even ranges. You see from the Larcano, you see all the different colors that they're introducing which I think is amazing for us because it's sort of like our playgrounds because we can really be bold with the kitchen and sort of set yourself apart from everybody else's kitchen on your block. So for me, I love the colored appliances. Um, it could be, a, a, overall, you could have a, a tone that's pretty neutral throughout and have these vertical pops of color that are really interesting. Well, I like the idea of incorporating your favorite color like that because I always say that color is timeless much more timeless than the current trendy neutral. You know, when I talked about um, uh, brown at the very beginning, right? If you were to paint your house brown right now, it would immediately date your house 15 to 20 years. Well, I got that distinction from talking to a color expert years ago, a man that specialized in, like he, he, he flew all around the country picking exterior colors for um, like shopping centers and hotels. And he said, I don't pick neutrals because a neutral instantly dates the whole thing. So he only picks colors for when, like for buildings, because color doesn't date as fast as the trendy neutral does. So something, that's the reason why all these colorful appliances, I think, are way better than just like putting in like maybe black or maybe just brown. Stanley I mean, brown came in at the steel, end, which yeah. I was surprised to see as well. I don't think yeah. there's a one size fits all in It's color. really true. Um, yeah. I think it's all subjective and there's it no is. there's no rule, but um, I think being creative and utilizing um, companies that do these different colors are really interesting because for us, like I was mentioning, it's like our playground for us, you know. And it looks sharp. It looks, it looks still sophisticated with the walnut. It still looks sophisticated with the maple and even with the colored kitchen. It's a really cool, unexpected way to, to bring in color for... I have a lot of clients that are super timid, um, but you do this, like... Let's say, let's say the kitchen I did for my parents, like what if I were to put that cobalt blue in there? It would have gone beautifully. Yeah. So it's a, really, it, it's a really cool way to make a statement that no one else, you know, yeah, will have. Yeah, your block or your town would have, yeah. maybe. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we're at the end. So, um, oh, oh, did you want to say my, something? This is my tile, oh, by the tile. way. I'm yes. Sorry. Um, oh my God! I wanted to. I just got this in at the last minute, but I am launching um, a tile line with elegant mosaics in the salon. And what we're launching is called the Color Lab. We can take any Benjamin Moore or Sherwin Williams color and add it to glass, and you can have it customized in two weeks. And we're also partnering with Lati Creek Grout, and the same thing. You could take any Benjamin Moore color. 
um, any Sherwin-Williams colors, and you can do your grout as well. And so one of the ways we're going to be playing with it, we just got this launched a week before the show. So this is our, our uh, sample panel. Um, but we're going to be running the color up from the bottom, the lower cabinets, and we're going to be testing with, you know, running that maybe blue from the bottom into the grout and then layering natural stone in there, or we're, we're doing it the inverse way. So we're, at, we're, we're, we're playing with it. So this is exciting for us. Awesome. Is this the last slide? I love that idea of color it's very grout. Cool. Yeah. 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 That's also unexpected. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Well, because you have how many colors that you, of the grout, for example, that you like you, you oh, chose. I think I have designed. twelve in mind that yeah. I'm launching with. Well, yeah. it's just yeah, because when I when I had uh, helped my sister, we put it, we took out her travertine backsplash and in her pink beige glazed Tuscan kitchen, and we put in like, um, I put in the creamiest backsplash I could find. I mean, I wasn't doing anything custom, but um, so anyway, the minute we start, we put in started putting in the cream grout. I mean, it just looked way too stark with these pinky beige creamy cabinets that were not going anywhere. So I I said, halt, halt. <laughs> I ran out and came back with some mocha colored grout. And it's amazing how it just turned it all into kind of a creamy beigey look and transformed yeah. it. So grout is huge. Yeah, absolutely. And also I'm working on a historical home right now and they want to use the subways and the pennies, but they also want color. Yeah. So this is going to be a way where I can give them a classic look and add you know, different punches of color that, you know, blend with the wallpapers that I'm bringing in. So it's a really fun, it's a really fun way of playing with it. It's a beautiful, it. beautiful tile. Thank you. Awesome. So I think we have a few minutes um, left to open up the floor for questions. We've, so the question was, um, we talked a lot about um, whites and grays and blacks on cabinets, um, and we even showed color on cabinets. Um, but what, what is our thought on stains, uh, wood stains for cabinets? Um, and we, we love actually using wood stain as well, but our, the stains that we're, we're going to is, um, we're really trying to incorporate um, uh, the ceruzing, um, which is, you know, basically getting, you know, white into the grain, um, which is a very like French 40s look. Um, and so we're actually, trending towards doing that a little bit more. Um, and then we're still, whenever someone wants to stain, like we're doing a, a study right now, and he, he wants traditional, um, but it has to be a brown stain that has an undertone of gray. So that's why I don't think gray is yeah. going, going yeah. away anytime soon. No one wants cherry, cherry, no cherry. That's oh, I mean, but it's like brown, right? The minute every, we all was, were clear that brown was over, I mean, that's when it had just like really hit the masses, right? So. It's definitely not going anywhere. So going back to even Metropolitan, I think, like, you know, I actually got an email two weeks ago from this woman who said that she showed me some corners of her living room. She had painted it like Metropolitan. And she said, I think I've made a huge mistake. And she had this, like, oh, she had this pale, medi like, pale oak, just, like, nothing wrong, uh, her hardwood floor. She said, I think I need to stain it black. What do you think? I said, oh, no, no. No, no, you have not decorated yet. You have not, I don't see your space, but I will bet you dollars to donuts that you have not decorated. And now you're like, the color is definitely wrong, right? I mean, so you need to think about that. So the color is, I mean, it's, it's, not, it's not everything, right? It's just a piece of the whole picture. So, but I, I would definitely say the same for wood stains. Yeah. What, what about you guys? Um, I'm seeing, and what I'm also installing are a lot of maples, like washed light woods. Um, and I'm especially doing it with black accents. So um, a lot of commercial spaces, a lot of cafes, little bistros, they're loving, they're, they're coming with their inspiration pictures and they're loving what this sort of lighter feel in the wood, but still having that organic touch to it, especially in Manhattan where, where they're selling organic juices, they have that natural feel about it. Um, so we're doing a lot of the lighter finishes. I'm also doing a lot of walnuts, beautiful walnuts, mm -hmm. especially for libraries, dens, mm -hmm. and some more traditional kitchens. Um, the walnut uh, grain throughout is very beautiful and classic and yeah. timeless to me. Same. A lot of, um, you know, I have a mid-century 
homes in San Diego. So walnut is what we're putting in horizontally, which is beautiful. We're also doing the sarusing that you were talking about on, on the cabinets and dining tables, which is beautiful just to show off the grain. So I love mm -hmm. that. So I do a lot of new construction, and we don't always have a client that's got um, a strong direction as far as like an area rug or decor or whatever to work with when we're choosing the yes. interior selections. Yes. So I'm wondering if you could kind of speak to what are some good um, selection choices that we can be using right now that are going to have a lot of longevity and... Um, options for, for a homeowner that we may not even have met yet. Yes. Can I answer that? Yes. So it's a loaded question, only because you're a designer, right? So you're going to start with a palette. You're going to start with their inspirations and then take it and create mood boards and inspirational boards for them or the design idea for their, your first go around. So you will have selections of materials and fabrics. Um, but I would start even deeper. What do they love? What are they interested in? Do they collect? Are there art collectors? What are their arts? Do they collect Warhols? Well, you know you're gonna, they're going to love pop colors. You know? So you have to kind of um, you know, cross, all, cross out everything for the, the homeowner's background to understand what they're going to bring in. I also like to go into homeowner's closets because you can actually tell by their wardrobe what colors that they favor and what patterns they favor. So it's important to just take a peek at their clothes when you walk into the space, and you'll know right, right away if they're a monochromatic uh, client or if they're a pop color or they love geometrics, and you're going to be able to show them bold colors. But I, can, I, I think by inspiration pictures, you can kind of yeah. see you're a fortune teller for them, and then you can sort of develop from there. But it, is, it does start from the ground up, I feel, or just from colors and textures. So a spec like home. Spec home. Very, yeah, yeah, I mean, that's also... we... Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, in my e-design department, we do tons and tons of new builds where people are just hiring us to pick the colors for all of their finishes. So, what's my countertop and what's my, you know, kitchen cabinet color and what should my bathrooms look like? And so, we give them the entire plan and then we pick a real just a versatile neutral that they can use so that when they start to decorate when they get to that point because they haven't hired us for that and that's what you're talking about it's like a spec house you know then when they decide to buy the navy blue forest green sofa or something well then that's the time when they might paint their dining room forest green once they get to that decorating stage but so really all we're doing right now i mean everyone Grage is really the color, and when I say grage, like in my understanding undertone system that I teach, it's a very pale color. That's what everybody wants, is the palest of pale. So really, you know, in the realm of, you know, taupe, pale oak would be a big one, right? So like an ivory grage would be like ballet white, like a green gray grage would be like classic gray. I mean, but then that always starts also with like, what's your countertop in your kitchen, right? That's the open room. That would be the place, the first place that I would look to what should be like the main neutral that's going to go throughout the home. Yeah. Can I ask what the demographic is for your new constructions? That's a good okay. Point. So she's in Idaho currently, and a lot of your clients are coming in from California. Is this a second home, or it's just like a move, or...? And yeah, okay, <laughs> okay, smart. Um, so, you know, I think that's a that's a great question because what the beauty of that is that you can make choices. You want to be able to be marketable and you want to sell, but you also sometimes it's so beautiful not to have a client because you can do whatever you want. Um, so the reason why I asked about demographic is, um, you know, I would call the quote unquote safe things like I think. Um, my go-to, Benjamin Moore Shoreline, is always the throughout color. I always, 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 I think it's that perfect. Um, it's not too purple. It's not too blue. It's, I think it's right down the road. Um, so to give you a specific um, answer, and I feel like that can, can be layered or painted over or whatever, but yeah. it's a really perfect color. And I use Decorator's White um, for just the all-over trim and then ceilings because... Um, sometimes we'll do um, white dove, but it tends to be a little, sometimes a little creamy for some people's taste. Um, 
But, um, you know, the other thing is that I'm seeing um, a lot more for new homeowners want light floors. So uh, just a classic white oak um, uh, is what we tend to do. And then we'll mix our own stains. Um, and it's usually like, believe it or not, like three parts silver, one part white from Minwax. Um, so it, it, I definitely see like... It just depends on the demographic and if you're trying to make a name for yourself to be maybe a, a new home uh, uh, builder that is a little bit more avant-garde, then my answer would be different because then I think what we would probably start to, to say is maybe push the envelope with using a high gloss in one of the rooms, you know, um, so it depends. Can I ask you if you render? Yes, more so because they're not going to frequent... Oh, they're not going to frequent you as, as often as they would probably want to, especially in the build, but at least you can sneak peek these imageries on a website or whatever, how you present to them. So I think if you do go bold and push the envelope, I think for you, it's going to set you apart. And it's also going to set that community, because I'm sure their, their developers are going in there and making these beautiful homes, and they're not the only ones. So I think that if it's already a stylized place, and not as safe as a typical developer would do, it's definitely going to set you apart. And people are going to be like, oh, wow, this is interesting. It's definitely different than what we have. I would agree. Yeah. So um, if I were you, I would render this, this beautiful layers of furniture on top of all the hardscapes that you're going to be doing throughout, even if you keep it neutral, but then pump it up with a, a fabulous countertop or an island that is a very unusual marble and or you know a quartz material that's going to make you different from the, the next designer, the next developer who's building up, to, up the street. Just a quick side note on rendering. Um, if you don't have the time or the resources to add that to your repertoire, um, I would recommend PowerPoint. We use PowerPoint for everything, and it has Photoshop capabilities that are built right in. And all you do is you drag a JPEG in. Um, you copy it, paste it. You can literally kind of build. It's almost like building like a mood board, but you can actually Photoshop within, and so you can get some white spaces out, and you can start to layer things, and it can be a quick rendering. Um, and that's do, very yeah. helpful for me. You could do it with an Illustrator program, too, which yeah. is easy. Fabulous. Um, I think we're out of time, right? 10 o'clock is when? Yeah. Unless there's any more questions. Is there any more questions? Do we have time for more? Awesome. Yep. We have a little break before the next session, oh, so. I'm a San Diego girl, too. <laughs> um, I... Our trend is white cabinetry, I feel like. I was just wondering your opinion on the trend of that staying or going, because I, I feel like every person I walk into is either white cabinetry or gray cabinetry where we live, but I was just curious your guys' feeling on that. I, you know, I'm, I get it a lot, too. I mean, that's, that's sort of the thing that, that clients are into, but I do try to bring some color in in the island, at least, um, you've seen that I do, I do a lot of that, like, different colored lowers and uppers, the tuxedo look. But at least try to get them, push them a little bit on the island. You know, that, that's usually a way to make it look custom for them and still give them the white kitchen, but a little moderner, modernity as well. I do that as well. So I, I offset it by doing the island a totally different color. And what I also have been doing for the people who want white, which I tell them that I, I don't do white kitchens, and then they laugh at me. I'm like, no, I really don't. <laughs> um, I, I still, I'll do the white for them, and ultimately they live there. They're our clients, right? They pay the bills. So I'll uh, open some of the toppers and put glass and then do a pop color in there to match the island just so you kind of offset it. So there's just something with a little bit of a personality. Or you paint the kitchen a bold color and keep the white cabinets. We've done the exact same thing um, and actually even mixed, um, like the island ended up being ceruse, almost like, a, almost like a medium tone. And then we did the same. We opened up a full corner of all uppers that were glass and then actually had the millworker make a, a, a thin panel to put on behind where the ceruse was showing behind. And we made sure there was lights in there so you could distinguish and see that it was thoughtful and was all put together. But I think white is never never going to go away. There's always going to be someone that wants white. And it, what it comes down to is um, what we talked about earlier is having that visualization, like 
talk with your with your client and educating them, showing them a, a lot of inspiration images just to make sure that white really is what they want because you might just see some patterns where maybe they're starting to err on, on the side, but there's always going to be someone that wants white, yeah. So my perspective on white, those of you that read my blog, <laughs> is that that's pretty much, I mean, I... My blog, my, so my perspective is different because I write for the everyman, right? Like I'm writing for the person that has no idea. So when they hit my website, they're like, okay, I, here's the answer. So I, my personal take on white is that at the end of the day, all of the other kitchens that you see out there, you know, you're going to be able to say this is when this kitchen was installed in your house, right? If you painted your kitchen like a charcoal gray, we're going to know that it was installed in the gray trend. So... Um, I think that all these beautiful custom kitchens done by, you know, these fabulous women here, you know, it's totally, it's a different world when you have a beautiful custom designed kitchen by someone that just really knows what they're doing, right? So when someone wants to know, because they're on their own, talking to their millwork person, they don't really have a designer, like what color should my kitchen be? My answer is always white, because I think that that looks the best. You start throwing in these black kitchens and small little, you know, houses where, you know, and it, it just, I mean, I see them every day because my world is like I'm dealing with, I'm looking at trying to make that living room that is full of brown furniture look better, right? That's, that's my world because I, because we do, all ton, you know, we do 20 to $30,000 a month in just e-design every month. So my world is much different from the custom world that, you know, you all are in. So, yeah. So that's my take on, on kitchens. Thank, Thank you so you much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you.